Labor and management tend to get along like cats and dogs. The difference is that pets don't usually stage work stoppages. Enough is enough and it's about time that people start fighting back on this and you have seen what has taken place. Welcome to WatchMojo.com and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 labor strikes in American history. For this list, we're looking at work stoppages that have occurred over U.S. history and have ranked them based on their numerical or historical significance. Unions are coming back. People are getting fed up with corporate America taking away uh, benefits, reducing jobs to part-time jobs. It's time to put a stop to it. Number 10, the Great Steel Strike of 1919. The stream swells in volume, a fiery river if you ever saw one. But you, as an uninitiated onlooker, could not be expected to know that these men in charge are very much in command. During World War I, the dismal working conditions and low pay in the steel industry improved. Soon after the war, however, the situation reverted to pre-war levels, prompting a strike of 350,000 workers that lasted three and a half months. Corporate leaders turned the tide of public opinion against the workers, feeding on immigration and communist phobias of the time. The strike failed, and union power in the steel industry was eradicated for more than a decade. Here is an operation which constitutes in itself a critical test of steel. Number nine, the UPS worker strike of 1997. Everybody has to stand together to be together as one, and that's how you take on corporate America. Labor was in a definite slump by 1997, so the success of the United Parcel Workers strike was something of a surprise. I want a, a good contract. We've been fighting for a long time and we don't want to settle for something that's not a quality. The 185,000 Teamsters workers struck for 16 days in August, with one of their primary concerns being the company's policy of hiring part-time workers so that they would not have to pay benefits. Because it is what this country needs. Decent jobs, a chance for the dream. Public support was strong for the workers, resulting in UPS agreeing to the demands of the union and giving labor its first significant victory in many years. This is a great victory. This is a great victory for everyone. Number eight, the U.S. Postal Strike of 1970. In New York City, postal workers demanded a vote to strike and all hell broke loose. Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night stays these couriers from their swift completion of their appointed rounds. Unless, of course, they want better pay. President Nixon ordered the army to go into New York City and to get the mail moving and said if necessary, he would do the same in other cities. Federal employees are denied the right to strike, which is what makes the 1970 strike by the U.S. postal workers important. The biggest post office of all, New York City, is entirely closed down. This first strike by public employees was illegal, but 210,000 postal workers did it anyway. For two weeks in March, the Postal Service ground to a halt, beginning in New York City and spreading nationwide. President Nixon's attempt to use the Army and the National Guard as letter carriers was a dismal failure, and the postal workers were granted increased wages and better conditions. Here's a man who knows that we're in the pain, but still, and all, he can give himself a 100% raise. Congress can give himself a 41% raise, but we can't have nothing. Number seven, the air traffic controller strike of 1981. All of those opposed to returning to work and staying out for as long as it takes to get a fair and equitable contract signify by saying yes. Yeah! A 1981 strike by these federal employees had a very different result. In August, 13,000 members of the Professional Air Traffic Controllers Organization went on strike for shorter hours and higher wages. President Reagan issued an ultimatum to PATCO, get back to work or get fired. They are in violation of the law and if they do not report for work within 48 hours, they have forfeited their jobs and will be terminated. The strikers refused, so Reagan fired 11,345 workers in one fell swoop. An ins insensitivity shown by this administration will not get our people back to work. We are as firm in our convictions as we were when this started. Playing hardball, the government jailed many of the union leaders and waged stiflingly high fines against the union for the illegal strike. 
The strike failed and was a crushing blow to the labor movement. We feel our cause is justified. Uh, we've all now been terminated. And uh, even if we wanted to end it, it couldn't be ended. Uh, that is to say, we have no intentions of ending it, but if we wanted to, it's, we couldn't. We're no longer employees. Number six, the Homestead Strike of 1892. Although the steel industry in general was fiercely opposed to labor unions, magnate Andrew Carnegie accepted their value in the workplace. However, when workers at his Homestead Steelworks in Pennsylvania demanded increased wages, Carnegie sought to break the union. The strike started on June 30th, but became a part of history on July 6th. That's when 300 Pinkerton agents hired by the industry arrived. An intense battle ensued, with both sides armed. By the time the smoke cleared, nine strikers and three agents lay dead, and the union suffered a major defeat. Number 5. The ILGWU Strike of 1909 The skillful operators who sew up the whole dress work under high tension. Known as the Uprising of 20,000, the International Ladies Garment Workers Union strike lasted 14 weeks starting in 1909. Working conditions in sweatshops were truly abominable and frequently dangerous. But when 20,000 workers in New York City, most of whom were women and immigrants, went on strike, no one expected it to succeed. But with a motto of, we'd rather starve quick than starve slow, workers were finally able to win many of their demands, including a 52-hour work week. Saturday and Sunday off and fair wages were the result. Number four, the Great Railroad Strike of 1922. An astounding 400,000 railroad shop workers went on strike on July 1st, 1922, prompted by management's plan to decrease pay by seven cents an hour. That may not sound like much today, but in 1922, it represented a 12% cut in wages. Management responded to the strike by replacing most of the workers, and violence often broke out. 11 people were killed over the months the strike lasted. A federal judge eventually issued an injunction outlawing strike activities, effectively ending the work stoppage on September 1st. Number 3. The Textile Worker Strike of 1934 Now, just surprised that uh, anybody wanted to unionize down here. We thought, you know, things were going along so great. Labor Day of 1934 marked the start of a major strike by 400,000 textile workers. Lasting three weeks, the strike was largely a response to the industry's increasing demands that fewer workers be used to produce more goods. You got somebody behind you, pushing, 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 wanting more and more and more to give you less and less. Coming in the midst of the Great Depression, both sides in the dispute felt tremendous pressure. Mill owners responded with strike breakers, often armed, and the strike was ultimately a failure. Many strikers were killed and thousands lost their jobs. My grandmother told my mother that she would rather see her take my brother and me to the graveyard than to bring us to be brought up on the cotton mill village. Number two, the bituminous coal strike of 1946. 68 million tons of coal production was a loss during the long layoff. American railroads, factories and homes are desperately in need of plenty of these black diamonds. One of labor's longest strikes lasted from April 1st to December 7th, 1946. Seeking higher wages and better conditions, some 400,000 bituminous coal workers heeded the call for a strike. And they were hardly alone. By the end of 1946, well over 4 million Americans were involved in strike activity. The coal strike drew special attention from President Truman, who feared that it might stifle the post-war recovery period. And although he fined the union heavily, the agreement he offered did address many of the workers' concerns. When the long coal trains move again, we can all look forward to improved production in all industry. Before we reveal our top pick, here are a few honorable mentions. Here's Mike Needham heading in, save Rick, the rebound, score! Mike Needham with his first ever NHL goal! We're told they are actually on strike as we speak. They will complete any run, drop people off their destination, then take the buses back to the barn. We're not asking for very much. I mean, they want four extra cents a DVD and they want 2.5% of whatever they make for profits for internet. Number one, the steel strike of 1959. 
The longest and costliest strike in the history of the steel industry hit the United States economy in 1959. A half million employees walked out on the steel industry for 116 days in 1959. As the union asked for a wage increase and assurances against reductions in hours, number of employees and more. In July, the steel industry across the nation banked its furnaces, turned off the vital flow of steel. 500,000 steel workers saw their last paychecks for at least five months. President Eisenhower invoked the Taft-Hartley Act to compel workers back to work. And when the union sued to have the act declared unconstitutional, it was defeated in a Supreme Court decision. I'm not going to try to assess any blame, but I'm getting sick and tired of the apparent impasse in the settlement of this matter. The United Steel Workers of America Union ultimately prevailed in obtaining a favorable contract. But the long-term effect of the four-month strike opened the door to imported steel, leading to a substantial decline in the size of the U.S. steel industry. Many of the nation's auto plants closed down within a few months. Their supply of steel used up. Do you agree with our choices? What other famous American strikes deserve to be on this list? For more enthralling top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. We're going to turn it around because there's enough money to share and we're going to make them share it. Well.